Today we're talking about how I would learn data structures and algorithms if I was a beginner again. If you want to pass your tech interviews, you have to learn algorithms. But here's the thing, I'm not going to tell you to do a list like the Blind75 or Necode 150, because that's not what you need. What you need is to understand how to build your foundation. Without the right foundation, you won't even be able to attempt those common questions. So this is going to be the two things that I would do differently if I was learning from scratch. If you do all of these, I guarantee DSA will finally make sense to you. I know this stuff works because teaching algorithms is all I do. I'm an ex Google software engineer and I've taught data structures professionally for almost a decade now. So I know that these are the secrets to learning algorithms quickly. Tip number one, don't focus on leak code lists like the blind 75. If you aren't familiar, the blind 75 is a list of common leak code questions. There are many lists like this. I mentioned to not do the blind 75, but I'm really referring to all of them. That means don't do the blind 75, grind 75, neat code 150, the whatever 100, and the too many 200. Okay, so I made those last two up. I'm advising you to not focus on these lists of common questions. This is probably surprising to you. The common advice is to do these lists of problems to get good at data structures and algorithms. So why am I telling you to avoid them? Here's what you need to understand. If you're able to solve a list like the 75 or 150, then that means that you are already good at data structures. But if you're not yet proficient at data structures, working through that list won't get you to that level. The problems that appear on the blind 75 and Necode 150 are common interview questions. Those problems are the end goal. You shouldn't start at the end goal. The end goal is hard. The end goal requires prerequisite knowledge. The end goal demands that you build up to it. If you're a beginner, then jumping into a list like the 75 or 150 is like doing things backwards. There are a bunch of fundamental problems and concepts that you're missing. If you had these fundamentals down first, you'd have a much easier time tackling these common questions. This is a mistake that many learners make. If you are already breezing through the blind 75 or need code 150 and you find it easy, then this advice is not for you. To be honest, this entire video is not meant for you, so you should click away now. But on the other hand, if you're someone struggling with those problems and learning feels like a slow grind, then you're in the right place. Side note, speaking of the grind, I always find it hilarious how some people proudly say to just keep grinding lead code problem after lead code problem until the concepts stick. I mean, there's literally a list of lead code problems named the grind 75. I want you to know learning doesn't have to feel like a grind. If it feels like a grind, then you need to change your approach to learning data structures and algorithms. So stop trying to complete problem lists without the proper background knowledge first. I'm not saying that you should never do these common question lists. I am saying that you shouldn't do them right now. You're not quite ready for them yet. If you had proper background on the data structures and the core algorithms that they utilize, then you would be able to deal with the problems on the 75 or 150 list without it feeling too far over your head. And I already know what you're thinking. Well, don't the lists like the Neat Code 150 also include easy leak code problems? So won't those easy problems be a good starting point and give me the basics? You tell me. When you do a problem labeled easy on the list, do you actually find it easy? Or do you have to look at the solution? And when you look at the solution, do you think, yep, zero chance I would have came up with that on my own? Don't believe the easy, medium, and hard labels on leak code problems. I teach data structures for a living and pass the Google interviews myself. So believe me when I say, Easy is a subjective label. Difficulty depends on what problems you've experienced before. So don't feel bad if you have a hard time with a problem labeled easy. It doesn't mean that you're dumb or exceptionally bad at algorithms. It's not your fault either. It's just that no one taught you the concepts first. Here's the issue. The issue with lists like Neat Code 150 is that they only contain problems from leak code. This would be fine, except that leak code was never designed for learning data structures and algorithms. Leak code contains problems that could appear on interviews, but not the fundamental problems that will build up your knowledge progressively up to that level of interview problems. You can't skip any levels of the game and just go to the final boss. Data structure and algorithm interviews are no different. Here's the truth. Most people try to grind a list of leak code problems to learn. And this is exactly why most people still struggle with algorithms. There is hope though. My recommendation is to learn about the individual topics first outside of leak code problems. So for example, if you're working on linked lists, search YouTube for highly rated courses about linked lists. The important thing here is to use an actual course. A list of leak code problem tutorials is not the same as a course. A course will introduce the data structure first, then give you problems to practice related to that data structure. A course is self-contained. 
This means that all the background you need is provided within the course. You'll start basic and build gradually. If it's a good course, then it'll be beginner friendly. You'll know if it's a beginner friendly course, if it starts dead simple. And by simple, I mean absolutely fundamental. So if it's a linked list course, then the first problem it should show you should just be to print every value of a linked list. Yep, I mean that simple. The irony is that a beginner problem like this, simply printing every value of a linked list, is not available on LeetCode. But at least now you know why. It's because LeetCode is bad for learning. If you struggle with LeetCode and want to learn in a better way, then I think you'll enjoy my Data Structures and Algorithms course at Structy.net. I've designed the curriculum so that it starts at the fundamentals and increases the difficulty slowly, over time, so you never miss a step. And it's not just a bunch of LeetCode video tutorials. It's a cohesive course where each problem is specifically designed to build on top of the last. This design ensures that you're really learning the concepts and not just memorizing things. For every problem in the course, you'll have access to an in-depth video explanation. You can start the course for free today. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking it out. If you focus on learning the core data structures first, instead of jumping straight into leak code problems, then you'll have a much easier time making progress. However, there's another deadly trap to avoid. If you don't avoid this, then you'll spend a lot of time studying, but not actually improving your chances on a tech interview. And at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. Let's face it. We only study data structures and algorithms because that's what companies ask us on interviews. So if you want to land that software engineering job, you need to maximize your chances of passing. Many people lose sight of this goal. You probably even felt this too. In the space of job hunting and interview prep, the online conversation is dominated by leak code. How do I get good at leak code? Which leak code problem should I do? How many leak code problems do I need? You probably even read or heard this advice from someone. If you want a job, just solve 300 leak code problems. It's as if once you solve this magic number of problems, then companies will roll over and bless you with an offer. You'll be exactly what they've been waiting for all along. You are the chosen one who solved 300 problems. I mean, they make it sound like you won't even have to send job apps anymore. I think once you hit 300 problems, the companies will start applying to you. But that's wrong. Here's the reality. Data structures and algorithms is only one factor in a successful job hunt. Here's what I mean. If you don't study algorithms, you won't get a job. If you don't send applications, you won't get a job. If you don't improve your resume, you won't get a job. If you don't improve your verbal and non-tech skills, you still won't get a job. I can go on and on. There's so much more to a job hunt than algorithms. And this is coming from someone whose domain is training people for algorithm interviews. My realm is algorithm interview prep and not all that other stuff. But with all this in mind, here's how you need to reframe your algorithm preparation for a more holistic approach. Your goal is not to complete an arbitrary number of leak code problems. Your goal is to master as many of the patterns that are going to appear on the interview in the least amount of time possible. What we're talking about here is efficiency. You want to get the most out of your study time. The less time you need to spend on algorithms, the more time you can spend on all of those other things that will help you get the job. Remember, the goal is to get the job. Checking off a list of problems is secondary to that. That's why tip number two is this, focus on high leverage patterns. By high leverage, I mean patterns that solve a lot of common interview problems with a relatively low learning time investment. The key phrase here is low learning time. You do not need to spend one year or more learning algorithms before you start applying to jobs. You just need to study the highest value concepts before you start applying and taking interviews. If you do this right, you can be well equipped for interviews within a month or two. Here's what I mean. For data structure and algorithm patterns, we should value them based on two criteria. The first is frequency, low frequency versus high frequency. Frequency refers to how common a problem is in coding challenges or interviews. The second criteria is learning time. Learning time refers to how much time and effort you need to be proficient in a pattern. Learning time is something not spoken about enough but it's absolutely critical to finding a job in a reasonable amount of time. If you have three years to study full time and then find a job, then this advice is not for you. By all means, study everything and master everything. But if you actually value your time and you have a deadline for when you want to interview and land a new job, you need to focus. You need to focus on the patterns that are low learning time, but high frequency. This is the region you need to live and breathe in. This is where you'll make a killing. Honestly, once you master these low effort but high frequency patterns, you should start applying and accepting interviews. You'll have a good shot of passing them. 
While you apply and interview, you can still continue to study algorithms. Your algorithm journey will be ongoing. The low effort, high frequency patterns are things like hash maps, depth first search, breadth first search, etc. Not only are these concepts the focal point of common interview problems, but they are often featured as a component of more advanced problems. Usually a hard interview question requires us to combine various simple patterns together to reach a more complex solution. That's why the basic patterns offer the most bang for buck. So after you master the low time, high frequency patterns, you can transition to the high time, high frequency patterns. Some examples of these patterns are things like subsets, permutations, and dynamic programming. For example, dynamic programming problems are tricky and will take a lot of time to get good at. But we all study them still because there's a real chance a DP problem can show up on an interview. That's why the topic is so notorious. Although problems in this category have a high learning time, they're still worth it because of their high frequency. Plus, if your learning is structured properly, these more difficult problems usually build on top of the simpler problems from the low time category. This allows you to leverage your previous understanding against new problems. This is exactly how I structured the curriculum to minimize additional learning time for my students. I don't recommend you spend effort studying low time, low frequency patterns. They're often one-off solutions and not that reusable across multiple problem types. Because they don't occur often, there's not much opportunity to practice them because they're so specific. For example, this would be things like bit manipulation. Although there might be a hyper-specific bit manipulation solution to a problem, it doesn't mean that you have to study that bit manipulation solution. Oftentimes, you can solve that same problem with a pattern that you already know, without investing additional time, like by using a hash map. That's why everyone says hash maps are such a critical topic. They're so versatile. I like to think of my data structure and algorithm knowledge as a toolbox. Every algorithm is a tool. A toolbox has limited space, so you can't just put every tool inside. We have to be intentional with selecting the tools that are most useful. In a similar way, I have a small brain. Because I have a small brain, I can't be good at every algorithm that some large brain person came up with. I like it when I can reuse a tool that I already have in my toolbox. I love it when I can solve a new problem using concepts that I already know. In fact, I'm pretty cautious and I avoid studying overly specialized solutions because I want my algorithm solving toolkit to be as lean and mean as possible. This is a strategy I've used for all of my students and one I'm committed to myself. For what it's worth, I don't study bit manipulation and I've deliberately walked into my Google interview rounds not knowing the topic and it went great. It also has gone great for my students. This is where the magic happens. Learn each algorithm well, but limit the number of algorithms. But it's an idea that a lot of learners are uncomfortable with. They feel pressure to learn everything. They want to master every algorithm. They'll look at the discussion tab for a leak code problem and try to study all possible solutions to a single problem. It's not a realistic expectation. That study strategy will never work. In fact, it's the exact opposite of a strategy. Focusing on everything is focusing on nothing. If you want to be strategic, you need to intentionally choose what not to study. With that in mind, the high time, low frequency topics are absolutely not a priority. These are complex and specific algorithms, things like Bellman Ford, Dijkstra's, and Union Find algorithm. They're specialized and solve a very narrow set of problems, so they require a lot of time investment. And besides, you can solve the same problems with other tools. There are too many patterns to talk about specifically, so I'm going to put them up on the screen. Pause the video if you need. I'll categorize them by high priority, low priority, and no priority. No priority means I don't recommend studying this topic unless you're so good at everything else. Otherwise, you're better off spending time practicing the higher priority ones even more. You'll notice that my high priority list is smaller than other recommendations you might find on the internet. This is because I want this list to be actionable and give you the most value for your study time. Like I said, if you make everything a priority, then you're really making nothing a priority. If you learn the fundamental data structures with a course first, instead of using lists of leak code problems while also strategically choosing what not to study, then I think you'll finally feel good about data structures and algorithms. If you want to hear about my exact study system I used to land my job at Google, then click or tap on the screen. I'm Alvin. As you can probably tell, I'm really opinionated on how to learn algorithms. So if you want to hear more tactical advice about learning DSA, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.